Well, again, the phrase needs no introduction <laughs> comes to mind. We have Florian Rubelt from Roche. Florian has been with the air community, I think from the very first day and is a, a great example of a both academic researcher and a, a, a researcher at a, an industrial partner. So take it away, Florian. Yeah, thank you very much, Felix. Um, yeah, I'm now at Roche. Um, before I was uh, yeah, on an academic research and this air community for a while. And I really like to recognize where the whole repertoire thing is coming from. So from purely academic and now it gets more and more industry companies involved. Um, we also see the first diagnostic application and we at Roche, uh, this is a farmer as well as diagnostic uh, partner. And we, so some people from Roche here, um, we are in the, in the red. So just to clarify from the beginning, so the research and early development, so this is not a, not a product, <laughs> what uh, we'll talk about, but we really like um, to, yeah, where's a click? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I will talk about the comprehensive immune profiling and there's two main questions what we have in mind is, um, one is uh, the unmet medical needs. So we really would like to see the repertoire sequencing. So the, this tool to add to the clinic a new data set, which is not yet available in most of the cases. And to answer um, questions which can't be answered otherwise, it can be or easier to be answered. And really provide to the physicians new tools to, to make better stratification of patients, other diagnostic or better decision which drug to use. I was also mentioned before from, from the previous speaker, there's a lot of potential and opportunities, but this is really where the question comes in, not just replacing existing ones, but really adding new tools to the, to the toolbox um, to address this question. And one thing is also what we focusing on is uh, having repertoire sequencing, not only as T cell or B cells and really having as, as a combined assay from B and T cells, and the T cells is not only alpha beta, there's also the gamma delta, so we really the three cell types. Some speaker mentions the gamma deltas, but they're still um, not that prominent, but they still have potential. Uh, there are tools available right now uh, from different kinds, and um, Gary from Illumina was showing a nice overview, I think, from, from all the different potential things. We're focusing on, on genomic DNA and uh, uh, to address this need. And really starting from different sample types from, from whole blood, from PBMCs, from, from fixed tissue, uh, DNA extraction, and then we call it immunopede. This is a immune primary extension target enrichment and it says in the name already. So this is a, a multiplex PCR based approach incorporating the UMI, which we also have heard before, which I will come back on it but using genomic DNA as a, as a starting point and then focusing for now on the heavy chain side to so the TRB, TRD and IGH and one assay. And then really getting the sequence, interpretative sequencing in the context of diagnostic potentially, um, but really to, to have an accurate clone count, all three cell types and then applying the, the bioinformatic tools to, to make interpretation of, out of it. And we have, seen a lot of software tools so there's a lot of potentials and opportunities and we still try to figure out what is the best way to, to analyze the data and i think the, the quest is ongoing what we really want to do going forward and yeah just shortly coming back to the umi because it's really something what we think is important to really base on genomic dna for RNAs around for a while but also for genomic dna uh to uh to, attaching the UMI unique molecular identifier to the template and the first uh, extension of the primers and having the possibility to collapse them afterwards so that you have an accurate clone count, but also um, get rid of potential amplification polymerase errors or sequencing errors to have an accurate baseline what we have also seen before so that the UMI is uh, quite useful and then based on all the analyzing tools based on this uh, good starting data set from the all three cell types. And then it's really what you can look in diagnostic or prognostic direction, but also patient stratification, which direction to go, uh, but also provide, of course, the researcher better tool to understand the com uh, complete or the comprehensive immune profile from the three cell types. Um, what um, 
uh, supporting the translation research and vaccines, for example, but also the, all the other disease area, which makes it quite attractive, but also more complicated because you can do so many things, but what is the, what are the first things to really focusing on? What are the tools to, um, to use for analyzing like the diversity or different organ tissues? Then the, the, the setup of the clinical studies to really get rid of the, the noise in the data or the, or the parts we don't understand yet. So it's, and uh, to tracking individual clones. And yeah, can we really back on the, the three cell types? Because we think it's important to leverage the full power of the repertoire uh, for some application, the one single cell type um, might be enough, might be all you need. Uh, for other cell, for other questions, this might be uh, good to, to look not only in T cells or B cells separate. And we have heard a lot of talks that what the individual power are, some are combining these, and then also adding the gamma delta as a, as a three, third cell type in it. And then the question how deep you need to sequence is, and of course, an obvious question, but it depends on always on the, the question. You want to sequence deep as you can, but it's then also down the line what's available for the sample size, um, especially for when you talk about tissues, as well as and from the cost perspective, what, what is possible. But these three cell types can be, this is one of the publications just coming out recently, or some days ago, where we looked in um, COVID data sets between healthy, mild, and severe COVID cases, and uh, looking at the repertoire and the overlap of the clones in the repertoire, as well as the cell count, what I was mentioned earlier with UMI, which is, makes it easier to, to, to count the templates, the genomic DNA templates in the first place. And if you look at the single cell types or in combined information you know, from B cells and D cells or in combination, and including also the cell count, the absolute cell counts or the cell counts per nanogram input material of the genomic DNA, the modeling gets better and better. So this isn't far from perfect. <laughs> So, but it's, it gets better and you can leverage the individual cell type advantages and combine them. So this is additive, it's not just replacing the information and it's an add information from each cell type. And this is a, a way we want to go forward with it and we leverage these three cell types with UMIs based on genomic DNA. We are in research with this no product and you saw the disclaimer of, uh, we are for research um, focused right now but there's a great potential. We want to see where the whole field is going and what we also can do on the way. And the second question, the first question is, so what is the unmet medical needs? So what is where um, repertoire sequencing can make the best impact in, in the clinic right now? This is the question. The other question is, what can you do best with analyzing all three cell types at the same time? So for now, for the heavy chain, but of course, there's also other technologies out where you include the heavy and light chains primers as well. But uh, these are the questions we try to answer for ourselves. And yeah, if you have any ideas, if you would like to follow up discussion, please reach out. We are here today and a little bit tomorrow or just by, by email. There's no website, so but feel free to, to reach out by email or just chat with us right now. Thank you very much.